Virgin Radio. Virgin Radio with Edith Bowman. Hi, James Murphy. Hello. It's great to have you back. Thank you very much. Um, I was just reminding you of our last meeting, <laughs> which was a slight, well, it was terrifying for me, but thoroughly enjoyable uh, live Q&A that we did after the screening of Shut Up and Play the Hits, which was a wonderful documentary that you did about the end of your band. Yeah. <laughs> the death of an era. Yeah. It's like, oh, bye, LCD sound system. I yeah. love you, but bye. Yeah. And here we are. This yeah. is great. What was the, what was the catalyst? What was the, what changed your mind? Um, I made, I wrote music. Yeah. And I've been writing, I started writing music and, um, <clears throat> and I didn't think much about it. I was just like, oh, I'm just writing music. It's what I do. Mm. And I wasn't recording it. And my wife was like, well, maybe you do have a really nice studio. You should probably use it. <laughs> um, since, and I occasionally do check with my 15 year old self. And my 15 year old self was livid that I had a really beautiful studio and was writing music and not recording it. So I was like, okay, well, I'll go record some music. And then it started going up. Well, now we have a problem. What am I going to do with it? Yeah. And the menu of options came up. One was make a fake name, like a, there'll be a pseudonym, like oh, yeah. and that. But that's so corny. And and did you come up with a few? Though? No, I always have <laughs> fake names. My favorite was Everteen. Nice. So when we would play for when we would open for other bands and definitely know that the the people in the audience didn't know or care who we were, I always said we're Everteen. <laughs> the the other two options were like I make a solo record, which made me feel ridiculous. The last one was to be LCD. So I I just asked. Pat and Nancy, what they thought. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, here's some music. If you think it's LCD, if you think it's not LCD, then that's easy because it's not without you. Yeah. And they were like, no, it's it, totally. Let's let's go. So I was like, oh well, here we go. Put, put the helmet on. <laughs> <clears throat> Back again. Do you think it was? I think almost kind of that thing of not being it. Not not that I imagine you ever mm-hmm. be feeling under pressure, but there was no expectation. It was just kind of you were just you were working at your own pace, and you you re not re fell in love with it, but you were reminded of what you love doing. Pressure isn't the, the problem. It's more like, um, I guess, impetus. Like, in the, in, Although I explained a lot of reasons to stop at the time, I was trying to explain a gut feeling, mm. which is like saying why you love somebody. And you'll say like, they're really smart and they're really great, but that's not why you love them. You love them because of some gut feeling. And then you there's an attribute you can ascribe. Yeah. <clears throat> and I felt like uh, I didn't want to do it anymore. And part, part of the reasons was it was, I think we were set up, we were set up so well that the next record we were going to, we were set up to be like really successful, the next record. I just, it was just, I just felt toxic. So it wasn't interesting. And then making music again, after all this time was like, I was just making music because I wanted to. So the impetus was there, was different. It wasn't that the pressure was too much. It was more the opposite. When you talk about live as well, did you miss, was that one of the attractions as well about getting back was because that buzz of being on stage and, and seeing that reaction that you, you know, I've been on quite a few of your shows in the, you feel like you're part of that kind of crew on stage. There doesn't seem to be any barrier really when you're in that audience between you guys and the fans. I mean, there's always a physical barrier. Obviously, and yeah, security. And security. Yeah, and a no. really long space where they have it's, it's really gotten bigger. It used to be just a little barricade yeah. with one guy. And you then it was a barricade that squeezed past but, if you were taking pictures. Yeah, then there was like a, a one meter. There was like a law that had to be like. And yeah. now it's like you need to be able to drive like a bus between people. I if find you want a stage strange. dive, you're screwed. Oh, you face plant. That's it. It's alone. <laughs> it's a lonely stage dive. <laughs> but was that an attraction for you of getting you know getting that live experience again and, and that audience and no I mean I love it but it, okay I was talking about this I've been having this conversation a lot because we've been playing a lot yeah and people have been saying to me are you excited about the Brooklyn shows are you excited about these shows and yeah. I I kept I'm really at just saying what I'm supposed to say and I always have been up about it. Like it'd be Good. very, it would be fine to just say yes, just yeah. There'd be there'd be a very short conversation. You excited? Totally. And then that's the end of that, and we can get on with whatever <laughs> we're supposed to be talking about. But I started being like, well, no, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm not excited. If you were to ask a like a, a professional athlete if they're excited about a match, they might be like, well. Mm, uh, there's a lot riding on this and like this is my job and the other people on the other team are really good and I don't want to humiliate myself or fail <laughs> and I got my teammates to look after and then there's fans that have dedicated their lives. There's kids crying in the stands when you lose. It, there's a lot going on. Like sure, I love to play and there's a thrill when it's going well but sometimes you're out there and you're like your legs don't work and you feel like an idiot. So that's if that's excitement, it's wonderful and it's but it's like saying are you excited about life? Like sure, but life is... Hell, and then it ends. <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs>
Um, before we go, um, I've got to. Um, <laughs> it's really. Yeah, before that is we it. go, oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, thank you, Gillian. On life, that note, life, life is, is hell, and, and it's done. And, then you're, it and you're dead. Yeah. Um, what well, I uh, last time I saw you was in Scotland, actually playing live, and uh, not just the cowbell, but the cowbell tower. Oh yeah, there's a lot is of a thing of beauty. Yeah, there's a lot of percussion, which I love. We had to add another human being to hit things. You might need another. We, human. we were seven people. Now we're eight. We have even another hitter. A human cowbell. A human cowbell. <laughs> I'd love that. Just someone like with cowbells attached yeah, to them. He just stands there. It's and a lot hit. of different things. It's a, it's, a, it's a broad palette. Things that one hits. Virgin Radio. Virgin Radio with Edith Bowman.